друзья, мы снова вернулись с вами в Мариинский 2, в 18.30 в Москве, в Петербурге, соответственно, тоже. И мы вместе с коллегом Джеймс, Джеймсом Джоли начинаем нашу ежедневную газету. С радостью говорю вам о том, что рядом с нами легенда мировой оперы Джон Фишер. И мне традиционно уготована роль человека, который будет много переводить, а Джеймс будет задавать вопросы. Так уж получается. Well, welcome back. Uh, this is the time of the day which we call the Gazette, where we have a guest, and we're going to talk today to John Fisher, who um, is something of a polymath when it comes to opera director, repetitor, executive, record producer, and long-time um, competition juror. Definitely. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is, is it a fun thing? Do you like doing that? I love it. I love it for several reasons. I love it because I find it's very interesting in my, in my profession, obviously, to hear new talents. That's one of the most exciting things, to hear new talent really important and to be able to uh, recognize that when you hear somebody who's really special it's I find it a very exciting thing Джон Фишер — человек эпохи оперного ренессанса, если можно так говорить, который делает практически все, но и, среди прочего, естественно, верно замечает Джеймс, профессиональный член жюри Джон Фишер, который на многих конкурсах участвует в этом качестве. И Джеймс спрашивает его относительно того, ну как вам? Он говорит, мне нравится, мне нравится это дело, я действительно получаю от этого удовольствие. Now, it would be very tempting to say that, you know, we've lived through the golden age of opera, but I'm, I'm eternally optimistic. I suspect you are. Do you, I mean, how would you characterize sort of opera singing today? Day. Well, I, th I think you're right to the fact that people seem to think, that some people think that, that, that there was a golden age and perhaps that's over. I don't agree. I agree with you. I think that it's just as exciting now as it was then. Um, and I worked many, many years ago, started my career 40 years ago. And I, yes, perhaps things have advanced in some ways or moved on in different ways. Um, what is different? Uh, there are still wonderful voices to be discovered. There's still, I think, the level of singing from a technical and musical standpoint perhaps has become more honed in some respects, um, uh, arguably, but I think that's probably the case. Um, the, in, the, the dramatic side of things, theatrical, certainly has become, more, has become more to the fore over the last 40 years, I would say, without any question. And that's bound to make a difference in the interpretative side of things for a singer. Несмотря на то, что золотой век оперы, как считается, прошел, об этом говорит Джеймс, он считает, что он оптимист и что все еще впереди, оказывается, что и мистер Фишер тоже считает примерно то же самое, что да, многое изменилось, но осталось самое, изменились интерпретации, изменились формы, но остались прекрасные голоса. И, конечно, они продолжают двигать оперу вперед. So, uh, coming back to the to the good voices, to the incredible voices, have you found some here on the on a Chikovsky contest? We've had contest? several. We've had several, and uh, it's all it, the standard is high, and uh, we enjoy every one. And of course, you feel for the singers all the time. You're hearing for you know you want mm -hmm. them to give their best, and you understand that. And it's a very intimate room very as well. Very intimate. It's an intimate experience, you know, and it's not. It's it can be quite a scary experience. We are very aware of that as jurors, of course, and therefore we want to be as supportive of the singers as possible because we want them to give of their best. But yes, we have heard some very interesting people and it's exciting when you hear that and you people who have they got kind of a plum and sort of a pre presentation techniques and communication as well as the voice and the obvious musicality and interpretative gifts, which are all very important. But there's nobody who you could say has not given us pleasure. Отличная сентенция только что от господина Фишера, который говорит, что да, действительно, мы здесь не встретили пока ни одного года, от которого мы не получили бы удовольствие. И то, о чем мы все время с Джеймсом говорим, о интимности комнаты, о том, что очень близкий контакт между жюри и исполнителями, и действительно хочется им помочь. Об этом говорит Джон Фишер. Но мне кажется, мы это с вами видим здесь с помощью трансляции. Now, one of the things that's striking about, you know, the makeup of the contestants this year is that it's very much dominated by Russia, former USSR countries, and interestingly, South Korea and China. I mean, do you think sort of the the kind of almost the sort of melting pot for opera has moved east. I mean, it seems we're getting over the last, I don't know, 20 years, we get many, many more opera singers from this part of the world yes. and, and east. Well, whether the melting pot has moved towards the east, I wouldn't maybe go as far as to say that, but I think you're right that there's been a, a, a huge development in, in certainly in training and exposure to Western opera and Western music, etc. over the last decades, no question. And that's, mm. I think, resulted in, in an increase, shall we say, um, of, of of the student population and then the graduate population and people who are studying at a high level mm -hmm. with this kind of exposure. So inevitably, I think you're going to get people who are very, very accomplished coming out of that system, these systems from the, um, the, the, the countries from the Far East and so on and so forth. I mean, I've noticed it a lot over the last few years and really, really excellent singers, excellent performers and the interpretative side, the communicative, the fantasy, the, all these kind of things, really, really very impressive. Как верно замечает Джеймс, немного сдвинулся центр 
вектор оперного, оперного движения в сторону России и дальше в сторону Запада. Как мы видим, очень большое количество представителей э, России здесь на конкурсе Чайковского и, и, и довольно большое представительство и, и Китая, и Кореи, тем более на прослушиваниях до туров дошли не все. И действительно, господин Фишер подтверждает этот факт, что да, опера сдвинулась, и э, мы видим огромное количество очень хороших голосов, которые приезжают не из Западной Европы, а больше с Востока. И здесь, конечно, хочется спросить, что вносит вот эта восточная волна, вносит ли она что-то в современную, в, точнее, в классическую европейскую оперу. Does this, let's say, Eastern Wave uh, bring some, something with it to the, to the classical Western opera? Absolutely. Oh no, it's absolutely works both ways. No question, it feeds into that, mm -hmm. and um, both, shall we say, worlds benefit if you like. They're coming together. I mean, I think that's happened in many, many areas of the world. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, also in classical music, and that's a very great, great thing. It's a very heartening thing, and it should be that way. Absolutely. Да, и действительно происходит обмен. Вот происходит, когда две волны накатывают одна на другую, и и в этом симбиозе рождается что-то совершенно новое. Now, the interesting thing about this this first round, each each candidate has has three tasks mm -hmm. to perform, as it were. They have to perform um, a, a baroque or classical mm -hmm. aria from an opera or oratorio, mm -hmm. a, a, then a basically a kind of full-on romantic mm -hmm. um, aria, and then a Tchaikovsky song. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems that actually that's a very skillful way of, of, of getting a kind of like a 360 view, a view. Of, of, a, of a singer. Yeah. Наш, наш, tradi sorry. Sorry for наш традиционный вопрос про репертуар, потому что три совершенно разных, разных произведения необходимо исполнять конкурсантам в первом туре. И действительно ли это дает для жюри возможность такого, как верно говорит Джеймс, 3D, 360-градусного обзора? Yes, I think it was. I mean, I think it, 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 what it does is gives you, gives you a kind of panoramic view. It gives you, because the styles are so different, but singing is singing if you're if you know how to sing and your technique is well developed and you know how you, to produce your sound you should be able to apply that to, to practically every kind of style if your voice is adapted you have to choose the repertoire that's suitable to you of course but what it shows us is a, a technical ability and um as um what would you say a, 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 um in the particularly in the baroque say handel bach mozart haydn whatever it happens to be of that year the, the baroque and classical periods um I suppose you could say it's 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 unashamed. You have to get it right. There's doesn't you can't. There's nowhere to hide. Mm. You know you have to be. It has to be very very clear. It has to be very focused. It's a little bit scarier. There's no safety net. <laughs> you know. And in the and then in the romantic aria, of course, it's operatic. And in opera aria, you've got the the theatrical and dramatic side of it. You have in everything really musically. Mm -hmm. But when you have the, the dramatic side, you have to bring in certain aspects of the interpretation of the character. Give us an idea of what the story is. You're telling a story. That's very important. Text is vitally important. The language, therefore, whatever that happens to be. Um, these are things that are very, it's part and parcel of your métier, eventually, as a professional singer. And then, of course, the Tchaikovsky. This is the Tchaikovsky competition, so, you know, and to be able to have a, an ability to interpret in that style and in that language, I think, is very, very important. No, well, действительно, то, о чем говорит господин Фишер, I'll try to, to translate it briefly. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay, it's okay. Um, история, история заключается в том, что, uh, когда вы, вы слышите первое произведение, вот в этом блоке из трех, первое произведение классической оперы, то там негде спрятаться исполнителю совершенно, и если у него есть хорошая техника вокальная, если он, uh, он должен выдерживать все три произведения репертуара и выдавать их на хорошем уровне, но там все слышно. Второе произведение романтическое, здесь речь идет больше о чувствах и о каком-то драматическом проникновении, а жюри на это тоже обращает внимание. Ну а что касается произведения Петра Ильича Чайковского, то вот здесь разговор об адаптации, о том, как исполнитель может адаптировать это произведение под себя. By the way, you don't speak Russian, so how, how do you, how do you, uh, what do you think about Чайковский, since you don't understand a word, I think? Well, I understand a little. Uh, <laughs> I, do. I, do, I, do, I do. I know enough Russian to be able to, in terms of singing. I've worked a lot on Russian operas, and when you do that, you learn the text and the pronunciation mm -hmm. and, and so on. So, so I mean, one has a, a feel for it, you know, and um, and you can have an idea, really, very good idea of, of how well, particularly non-Russian. Mm -hmm. You trust that Russian singers obviously sing Russian well. Okay, okay. But that's an interesting point because in, even in your own language, you have to be able to to communicate that yeah. whatever it is you're saying. It's not just about pronouncing it correctly. Because mm -hmm. the interesting well. thing is, is, um, is in the second round. Yes, there's a, a folk song. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, people think, gosh, that's a bit strange. But actually, that that in a way is almost the most 
kind of personal thing you and can almost ask arguably more to do. difficult because you've got to yeah. and yes you have because it's it's part of you or arguably part of you and you've yeah. got to be able to it's about communication I keep using yeah. that word but it really is it's getting that over whatever you're doing and having that ability you know and I suppose you could partly call it a charisma in a sense to be able to, to communicate and get the energy out to the, to the listener in, audience or jury or whatever it happens to be. Я пытался Having подловить uh, sorry. Sorry. Я пытался подловить господина Фишера на том, что он не говорит по-русски. Как же тогда он оценивает uh, песни Чайковского? Ну вот здесь, видите, мне не удалось. Во-первых, Джеймс mm. говорит, что действительно это профессиональный, профессиональный человек, который много лет провел, провел в жюри и, конечно, работал с русскими исполнителями и, конечно, ставил русскую оперу, mm. поэтому, в общем, он понимает, о чем идёт речь, но действительно и в следующем туре, во втором есть фольклорные композиции, которые будут исполнять uh, конкурсанты. И там очень интересный момент происходит, когда вам необходимо быть в контакте с, с исполнителем, не понимая, что он поет конкретно, но чувствуя его. So, um, what, what do you prefer, the very, the unique and 100% complete technique, or a very sensitive, sensitive way of, uh, of performing? Well, uh, one would like to see a solid technique, but obviously, well, I, I suppose the, the, the whole package, I mean, somebody who has the technique that enables them mm -hmm. to do everything they want to do as an artist, and if they are that artist that is able to communicate and tell a story, has something to say, as I put it. It's what I call fantasy, or in German they call it the Geist, the ghost, the thing that you can't define. You can't teach that, or you, know, you have that. And if you have that ability to communicate to, as any musician yeah. or performing artist, you, you know, it's a gift you have. I think we should put that in highlight, to tell a story. That's tell what a the story. Yeah, absolutely. No, it, uh, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, it's interesting, because the, the, the age range is 16 to 32, OK? Mm. You know, we can rule out the teens, generally. Mm. But by 32, you know, an artist is sort of, you know, they've got more than one foot on the ladder. Mm. You know, they're there. Is it difficult judging someone at that age, say a 32, against a 22-year-old? Because in a way you've almost got to predict what will happen. I think, in, in my personal opinion is that when you're judging as a jury in a competition where the rules are such that there is, for example, let's say a range range between 22 and 32, you, I judge them on what I hear. I don't judge it in, with having in mind this person is 32 or that person is 22 or that person is 24. Yes, you're aware of it and it's good to know that. I mean, perhaps when you come to, to judge and make a decision about it, you might you may take that into consideration. But I think if, you know, you can have people at the, at the, at the higher end of the spectrum who don't actually have that ability we've just been talking about as much as a 22-year-old have. You think, goodness me, that person is young and they're able to be, they're so mature in yeah. what they're able to do as an artist, as an artist, I think, more importantly. Мы коротко, я могу лишь что-то перевести, потому что не так, не так много времени остается. Джеймс спрашивает о том, есть ли разница, каково судить тому, того, кому 19 или того, кому 32. И, как выясняется, в общем, большой разницы, конечно, нет, потому что господин Фишер практически закрывает глаза только для того, чтобы слышать, что происходит. Хотя, конечно, 32-летний исполнитель гораздо более, гораздо более матер, да, гораздо более взрослый, и, возможно, он может передать гораздо больше. Uh, and uh, we've got a little excerpt from a concert performance of Tristan and Isolde conducted by Claudio Abado with John Trelevin, uh, Mihoko Fujimura and um, Violetta Urmana. Mm -hmm. Now, John, you worked with Abado at La Scala. Can you just give us a very quick sort of taster as to what that was like? Well, it, it was wonderful. I mean, sure. to start off with, it was absolutely... I was very, very privileged and felt very honoured um, and lucky to have had that opportunity. I worked with him for many, many years. Uh, as his assistant and also um, in other guises as well. And uh, to sum up my experience from, from the point of view of him as a conductor and his musician and the effect he had on me, he was a, one of the most honest musicians, the way his, his view on interpreting, but also in the preparation stage of things. And perhaps, for example, working as you're going to play a, a clip of an opera, um, is working with singers, mm. was always a, a, an ensemble. It was always a collaboration. He never imposed. He was not somebody to say, I want it like this, and you're going to do it this, and this. never like that. It was always a collaboration. Let's work together. Let's find the right thing. And once he had that, and the other quick thing I would say is that once he rehearsed, which he, were, which he did meticulously, meticulously, I mean, really, really slavishly, and got what he wanted, the result. Once that work was done, and he got to the dress rehearsal, be it of a symphonic concert or an opera, the work was done. And then he allowed himself to be, it sounds rather corny, but it's true, as a vessel through which the music came, and he didn't get in the way of it. He trusted the people he'd prepared, he trusted them 100%, and he allowed it to happen. Of course, he was responsible for a lot of that. But he was not, not, it wasn't an ego thing with him at all, in any way, shape or form. He was extremely honest.
У нас впереди видео из каталога Медичи, Клаудио Абада и Тристана Изольда, с которым господин Фишер с Клаудио Абада, естественно, работал неоднократно в, в, в Ласкала и вот зашел разговор о том, каким же, как, каково же была эта, какова же была эта работа. И речь идет о том, что Абада никогда не был тираном и, наоборот, всегда очень вежливо и хорошо работал с коллегами, доверял тем, кто что делает, никогда не смотрел, например, как работает костюм, как сделан костюм, потому что он верил в тех людей, с которыми он работает и всегда был открыт к новым идеям. Я бы вам все перевел, надеюсь, что вы поняли. Давайте посмотрим уже это видео, и uh, мы благодарим Джона Фишера. Thank you very much for coming. We will watch the video and coming back soon to this studio. Thank you.